and grow YouTube show. Your survival mode, talking about how you were in survival mode. And then once you started to feel safe, you were like able to connect with stuff. It sounds like you've had amazing different seasons of your life. Yeah. Yeah. And even just seasons as a metaphor, just yeah. brings us right back to nature. Um, and I feel like even now my current season, when we think about how a lot of us like filled our home with plants during the pandemic, and then there seemed to be like a wave of folks doing like a plant purge, right? Yeah. So a lot, <laughs> a lot, because it's because I feel like for me, when I was working remotely, of course, all I wanted to do was pour myself into my plants. And I, I was physically here. I, I might be on a Zoom call, I might be doing work, but at the corner of my eye, if I see somebody that's a little bit thirsty, I can kind of take a second and go and tend to them. Yep. It's not as easy when you have to jump back into the world and then have responsibilities. And for those of us who like to travel, like I just came back from being away for a week. If you need to be watered more than once a week, you're not going to survive in my home because I have to be able to leave you alone for at least five to seven days because yeah. it's just not going to work out. So that's also part of that season. And I think we've learned so much also just about letting go, right? Because once you go like public on the internet and it's like people know you as this person that has hundreds of plants in your apartment, what do you do when you decide, I don't want to have hundreds of plants in my apartment anymore? Does that make me a lie? Am I a phony? Am I this? Am I that? No. This is a new stage. I still have a lot of plants. And people who didn't see how many I had before are like, um, you have an insane amount of plants. I'm like, yes, but I have less than I have before. Yeah, you don't <laughs> even know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, so, and that's okay too. That's, that's part of those seasons that we go through. Um, and it's okay to let go. Our plants let go all the time. They let go of yellow leaves. You know, when that's part of like that shedding process. That's okay. You know, I, I know a lot of folks like when that, that first yellow leaf is like oh, panic, but it's like, hey, you have this new leaf coming in. It's just transference of energy. Like the plant's trying to grow this way. It's gotta, it gotta shed some of that old stuff from the past. And the same way like our plants, as we grow as people, we have to be okay with shedding and letting go of some things that are no longer serving us. Hell yeah. And, you know, it's interesting you brought up the the purge, the uh, the pandemic plant parent purge and fear. I felt that very deeply in our community, kind of at the end of, last year, beginning mm -hmm. of this year, the overwhelm. And I actually, I, I included a whole chapter in my book called the dark side of plant care, because I think plants get this reputation for being 100%. I stand by it. Plants are the number one wellness tool I have in my toolkit. But I think then because on Instagram and, you know, social media, they're touted as this perfect hobby and these perfect everything, mm -hmm. people feel that pressure to be perfect at it. And when they're not, they make it a mean as something about themselves. Then they make, then they feel like a failure. Then they get into this crazy cycle. And I've just seen over and over again, people really struggling with feelings of insecurity or ineptitude and dealing with those feelings is part of this process. It's part of this journey and it's so important. So, you know, one of the chapters is called on plant death because it's like when your plant dies, you know, and going on a plant, my husband, um, this is part of my story from way back when the podcast started, but I was collecting plants at like a really unhealthy rate. I was like, mm -hmm. so obsessed when I first got into them and my husband, he was my boyfriend at the time. So bold as the boyfriend now is the husband, you know, he's got me, uh, it's harder for me to like break up with him, but, um, it's me or the plants, but he asked me to go on a plant pause and it was so hard, but it was probably the best thing I've ever done for collecting because it made me stop and get to know the plants that I already had and not get to that overwhelm. And there's so much power in letting go of plants. Like I counted my plants today. I think I have 50 plants right now. And I used to tout that I had 150 plants in 500 square feet. That was like a huge part of my brand when I lived in yeah. New York city. And, um, my life drastically changed in the last two years. And it would be I would be so unwell. Like I would be so miserable if I was, if I had all 150 of those plants in my current life circumstances with three different moves and all the chaos mm -hmm. in my, in my personal life. Um, yeah. and I just think, I think everything you're, everything you said, it's just, it's so real. And I also, I'm, I'm happy we're both talking about it because I feel like people feel very lonely in that experience and in those feelings of failure, but it's like, no, 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 no. That's part of it. You're just in a bad, yeah. you're in a down season. Also like, you know, some people in my community, 
on my podcast, like our recent new parents, they had all these plants Then they had babies, plant human babies instead of plant human babies. babies. And they're like, I don't know how to manage this. Of course you don't. Like, of course you should reduce your plant collection while you go through this transition. Like that's okay. Plants will be here. Plants were here before us and they'll be here after us, after us. Like if you ever want to get back into this, you're welcome to, you know? And, and a part of the fun part too is like, so I, I have certain plants in my collection that I spent either I the, the, the price point of how plants fluctuates has been really oh interesting. Oh my gosh, yeah. Right. So, totally. So there are some that I have that I spent like all this money on that now it's like 15 bucks. It's like what? And mm-hmm. then there are others that I got for like 15 bucks and now they're super expensive. And yeah. so it's like the ones that are super expensive, I'm like, okay, let me make sure I take care of because you're an investment now. You're an appreciating asset because your price is just going up. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like I have this rapid for decursiva or decursiva, depending on how you choose to pronounce it, um, dragon's tail for some folks who want to call it that. And I'm looking at her right now and I was like, oh, she was struggling. But I came home from a week and she pushed out a new leaf and I'm like, look at you pushing out a yeah. new leaf. But I got that plant for 15 bucks at the farmer's market at Union Square. Amazing. And now, now they're like, the price points on those plants are crazy. So it's like, listen, things shift, things go. It's okay. That's life. It's just like the real estate market goes up, it goes down. Yeah. But you have to do what works for you at the time. You cannot worry about it at all. And you cannot feel bad when things don't go the right way or feel like you have to live up to a standard. And it's so funny how you said they have human babies. Cause I, I say that all the time. I talk about my plant babies, but then it's like, I have to specify human babies. Cause I'm like, I have two human children yeah. in addition to my hundreds of plants. Like yeah. y'all gotta come me and a cat. I have two human it's children. It's extremely impressive. <laughs> That's extremely impressive. It's like, there's a lot of things I take care of around here. Oh my God. I love it. Also shout out to the Raffidophora death Corsiva. I have one as well. And I also have a Raffidophora tetrasperma. It's one of my favorite plants. And that yeah. genus Raffidophora, Raffidophora, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> vigorous grower, easy. Mm-hmm. I feel like some of these really fancy plants end up being kind of annoying and hard to take care of. But my, both of my Raffidophoras like grow like gangbusters, exponentially, They're super yes. easy to take care of. Give them a little bit of light, and remember to water them occasionally. And they're, gr- they're occasionally going and they're crazy. Fine. And the very uh, sorry, the fenestrations on e- both of them are so different. They're so fun to watch each leaf unfurl. So, if you're in the market for collecting your, uh, if you're in the market for expanding your plant collection in a healthy, sustainable way, you should get a drop of divorce to Christina if you can. Yeah. Um, you Do 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 do